new Paolo Sosa or a mid-table merchant whose value is inflated due to the scarcity of CDMs in the market. Just how good is Zhao Polinia? Possession, cool and calm in the, the dangerous area. Statistically, Polinia comes across as a prodigious defensive force whose ability to protect his side surpasses the likes of Rodri. At 28, he's at the peak of his powers, making over 10 defensive actions per game. But if we look close at his success rate, we can see that whilst he's excellent, he's no Declan Rice. And that's further supported by the eye test, where we can see that Polinia can be found wanting in 1v1 duels. And against the very best ball carriers in central regions, Polinia can be slow to react, being left behind, and at times resort to fouling. Now, it is a rare occurrence, but it's something that would possibly be exposed in the business end of elite tournaments if he was deployed as a single pivot. Now on a positive note, Polinia is tactically disciplined and a genuine holding midfielder who marks space pretty well and knows when to be aggressive, when to hunt for the ball and when to sit. In that sense, he has a similar mindset to Arise who also blends both of these aspects of defensive midfield play pretty damn well. Now, whilst he does foul often, there's no denying that Polinia is stamping his authority on the game with his tackling. He's a throwback who loves to go in for tackles without any compromise and that makes him a strong choice to stiffen up a midfield from a defensive point of view to protect a defence. West Ham not causing Fulham too much concern right now as Jao Polinia picks up possession once. In possession, Polinia's stats don't look that impressive but we have to bear in mind he's playing for a smaller team that isn't going to dominate the ball. For Portugal, he hits closer to 50 passes per game. His forward passing, however, does leave a bit to be desired. Most of it is not really groundbreaking, but in general, I'd say he's a solid conduit for moving the ball from defence to attack. The main criticism I would have of him is that, even withstanding the fact that he plays for a smaller side, I don't see him ask for the ball enough in these deeper areas. And whilst that can also be attributed to Silva's build-up play methods, Polinia, even for Portugal, doesn't really run the build-up play in the same way Rodri does for a Man City. He's not influential enough to be classified as a proper deep-lying playmaker. Nevertheless, in general, he can turn on a ball in these areas and usually plays a measured pass into feet of his teammates and doesn't dawdle on the ball. So he's got solid decision-making. He's on the other end of the vicinity score in the third goal. That hasn't happened this season. In terms of the numbers, Polinia clearly likes attempting a long pass and his success rate of 60% is nothing to be sniffed at. Now, when we look at it a bit more deeper, his preference is switches of play and he likes opening it out, especially to the right flank. And in terms of his technique, he's got plenty of zip and accuracy and the weight is generally good. Out to the left, however, he isn't as trustworthy and he can be prone to error. Now, moving on to his vertical passing, I'm not impressed. He seems to hit and hope, no real vision of where his teammates or the opponents are situated. Perlo, he is not. A lot of these passes are overhit with little sense of direction. Not easy for him with the big survival. That hasn't happened this season. Hey guys, wondering what software we use to produce the state-of-the-art telestration graphics software on this video? Download Play by Metrica Sports, the essential tool for every coach and analyst. Use the link in the description to access Metrica's website and then apply the code Pythagoras in Boots at the checkout for a 10% discount. Manager sends off. In terms of his dribbling, Polinia can shield the ball pretty well and win fouls under pressure, hence his solid success rate. But when he looks to progress the game via ball carrying, he can struggle at times to burst past players and can get caught in traps. He simply isn't mobile enough or agile enough to match the Rodri's of this world, so don't expect a regular supply of sucking in the press and then breaking out of it with crazy dribbles. What I would say is that his receiving skills are pretty good, he turns on the ball pretty well and his footwork isn't that bad. But it's being able to do this at a high level of speed and doing it consistently time and time again that I believe is beyond a Polinia if we were to compare him to the very best ball-playing midfielders in this position. Jim Harrison making his way forward. He's going to make sure that they... It's a break. Robinson in some pain. He's full of... Unsurprisingly, Polinia is not lighting any fires for Fulham in a creative sense. But that can't really be held against him as the majority of players who do operate in a deeper lying role look to play the ball pretty conservatively and their main function is to move the ball from A to B. I'd say his accuracy rate for a through ball is pretty high 
And from the eye test, we can see that in situations where he's in relative close proximity to his teammates, he can slide a ball through pretty well and have a bit of disguise to it, especially in these wing regions. But when he's forced to really break open a defence with a complex pass over a large space of grass, he can be found wanting in terms of the weight of the pass. So not someone you trust to be a register. Alenia. Off goes Wilson. Oh, being harried in possession. Oh, that's a brilliant strike. In terms of goal threat, Pelinia does have a rocket in his locker and due to playing in a double pivot at Fulham, he can at times find himself further forward near the edge of the box, ready to strike from range. Due to his shots being mostly from far out, the accuracy rate is under 30%, but from the eye test, as long as he's had the chance to take a touch and set himself, his accuracy generally feels decent and he's clearly got a fair amount of power in his strike. Where he struggles is if he's a tad off balance or the balls come to him awkwardly, volleys, half volleys, he hasn't quite mastered the technique and I don't expect him to push his goal scoring game beyond five goals a season, even if he moved to a bigger club. In fact, I'd suspect it may even go down as he's supposed to take on a more disciplined sitting role at a big club. Pelinha. Pereira. The corner. It's a good header. Aerially, Pelinha does get through a fair amount of work and statistically he seems like a force to be reckoned with. From the eye test, I wasn't as impressed. When he's up against inferior aerial opposition, he can bully opponents. But when he's facing, say, a physical large centre forward who's dropped deep and is a bit of a handful, he isn't as brave in his duels. He can be out jumped and out fought. And there isn't the same conviction in the air that I see from a Rodri in Polinia. Rodri is the sort of player I would trust to be slot into centre back. I don't think I can say the same for Polinia. Nevertheless, from set pieces, he can be a handful. Once again, though, I think the reason why playing in set pieces suits him is that he can prey on weak links and therefore he can be effective in those scenarios. If he was man-marked by an aerially imposing centre-back, I don't think he would be as big of a threat. Tactically, Fulham mainly line up in a 4-2-3-1 and Pelinha features as the holding midfielder in that double pivot. Now, Fulham's shape in-game doesn't quite mirror the big sides and you'll often see in possession four defenders quite deep to help facilitate the build-up and Pelinha sitting in front acting as the connector to a front five with Pelinia's midfield partner in that double pivot, pushing forward to join in with the attack. Now Fulham will always look to play it through Pelinia, and in truth they bypass him quite often, which explains the low possession stats early in the video. Defensively, Pelinia is the main screener in front of the defence, and this is the valuable role that's obviously caught the eye of the big clubs. Now you can imagine him featuring for Liverpool in this deeper role playing, where the likes of McAllister and Endo are playing now. And there's no doubt that defensively, he'd prove to be an upgrade. His build-up play, however, would not be as big of a pull for Liverpool. But he is generally neat and efficient, so I don't see him being a liability on the ball. Arguably, Liverpool are probably the best fit for him out of all the big clubs. Moving on to Chelsea, I reckon he provides that leaky defence with a layer of protection. But the issue we have with Polinia is that he can be vulnerable to players running at him one-on-one. So... If he was paired next to an Enzo Fernandez, I'm not sure there's enough legs between that combo. But if there's other bodies around him like Caicedo, Gallagher, then he could focus on screening and not having to cover as much ground. The issue is also that Chelsea already have too many midfielders. So what would happen to Cole Palmer and his shift to 10? How would they fit in all these midfielders, such as Lavia when he returns to fitness? And if they went with a more narrow setup, what happens to Mudrick, Sterling? And do Chelsea have the fullbacks to make this system work if the likes of James and Chilwell are perennially injured? Now, Arsenal, he could provide cover for the unreliable Partey or even free up Rice to play left centre midfield. As cover, I don't mind this signing, but if he's brought in to start, I think it could disrupt Kai Havertz's recent progress in midfield. So for a smaller fee, not a bad squad signing, but not sure if it's a £60 million worth of upgrade for Arsenal. For Bayern, my concern is that whilst he could help Kimmich move out of that sixth role and into the register role between them again like the Enzo Fernandez issue not sure if they're mobile enough to form a top class double pivot duo and how much longevity is in that duo it makes sense from a tactical chemistry point of view but for me having Martinez and Schweinsteiger were a more explosive and dynamic double pivot duo I reckon Declan Rice and Kimmich would have been a much more suitable fit and it would have been a more long-term partnership in conclusion, Pelinia at a reasonable fee could provide to be a great budget option 
to stiffen up a number of elite club midfields, due to him being a hybrid of a ball-winning and sitting midfielder just like Declan Rice. Now we've seen with Rice just how much impact such a player can have on the tactical balance of a side. But having said that, Rice is a much more dynamic player, he's got more years on his side, Polinia does not and he represents more of a here and now short-term solution type of signing. Hence the fees being associated with a player of his ilk are disproportionate to what he brings to the table. I reckon he could help a side win a title so he does have some value to him but can he be the bedrock of an era like the way Rodri was for Man City? No. He's not going to be a defining player for that position over the next decade. He's already 28 years of age. I'd value him based on current market rates of around 30 to 40 million pounds. I think anything above that and you're looking at overpayment because in the long term it's not going to represent value for money. After three years you're looking at a possible Casemiro situation where the legs are not there. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, share and subscribe. I'll see you guys again next time. Bye.